if, if ever you want a conversation on the best ways and means to reach, Alex, uh, reach the general public, um, you can call me any time because I've got lists of stories and lots of them have been published in Direction already, but I'm always looking for more. So let me ask you a follow-up question. How widespread and popular do you think Alexander Technique could be? Do you think it could be like yoga? Well, I think... Ooh, I learned quite a lot from my conversation with Helga Fischer when I've interviewed her for the Pilates article. She's an English Alexander teacher who came from a dancing background and then studied Pilates, Alexander, then studied Pilates. And she was one of the co-founders of the Body Control Pilates Empire brand that's massive uh, through England and around the world. And what sh prior to that happening, Pilates was, was still a one-to-one one -one, um, thing that only the rich or time-rich people could do. And you know, expensive equipment, uh, very convoluted, hard to sort of explain or, or disseminate in, out into the general um, uh, public awareness. And what she was able to do with, with Lynn Robinson, uh, the other founder of the organization, was simplify it. Now, I'm not saying that Alexander Technique can or should be simplified, but, or even taught, you know, on a group basis. I'm not sure if that necessarily is the only way to go. But I definitely think that the premise and the basics of Alexander's technique, the sort of things that, you know, I went to Michael Frederick, his, his workshop at the Congress, and the sort of thing that he does in a group, which is an introductory group, and then people then will probably come for lessons, um, those sorts of things are very straightforward and they help people look at themselves in a way they haven't before. I think that kind of thing would... I really think those sorts of ways of sharing the ideas of Alexander Technique with 500 people in a room. Obviously, you can't touch any of them, probably, and not necessarily bringing somebody out the front, but methods of having people learn something about themselves that they haven't learned in any other way before. Pedro's good at these sorts of things as well. And you may not call it the Alexander Technique, but whatever you do call it, they think, well, that's really interesting. I want more of that. And the first, that first introduction may not be, this is an introduction to the Alexander Technique. It may not be that. It might be more of a self-awareness or self-control or self-regulation, whatever the buzz type of word is. The engine behind what we work with is the Alexander Technique. It's Alexander's work. That's what works. But up front, um, if, there are, if there are better ways of reaching the masses, that's what I'm looking for. Because as Mike Gelb, you know, he does, he does very large groups, um, companies and all those sorts of things, and public presentations. And he, if people ever ask him, you know, I want to study this more. He, he normally he, he doesn't do one-on-one -on -one lessons. He will say, "Look, I've got a couple of colleagues in the area. If you want to take this work, this creativity, or if this self-awareness work further, you've got to study Alexander technique." Now, he hasn't probably mentioned Alexander in his presentation, but it is the foundation of what he's teaching. Um, so I think perhaps if there's better ways to reach larger groups of people so that then they decide to, you know, dial 1-800-ALEXANDER or whatever it is. Um, that's, that, that's what I'm looking for is how do we uh, disseminate enough information for people to say, wow, that's great, I want more. And I don't know, any t I don't know that many teachers that work only in groups and I don't know whether or not that is the solution. But perhaps from a group of 500 people, introductory talk. 250 come back to the next, next level of introduction. That might be a group as well. And then after that, those 250, you've already touched 250 people. The second 250, maybe 100, 100 or, or 80 come to one-on-one -on -one lessons. You've still touched 500 people. 
that may one day come back or may one day tell someone, I did this workshop, it's about self-awareness, it was really cool, you should look it up. And throwing the net wider like that with things that are palatable and more uh, understandable for, those pe for, for the normal person that isn't so introspective as an Alexander teacher that they can actually say, hmm, that's interesting. I mean, that's what hooked me. The very first time I heard an Alexander teacher say, you learn about the things you're already doing that are causing the problems and you stop them, the problem goes away. It blew my mind. But I, I was four years old as far as looking for a solution. I was four years into it and I wasn't willing to take no for an answer. So I was a, you know, I was a unique individual. All the people I meet in the training schools, they're unique. They're people that are, you know, they're a little bit um, different to the average person. The average person doesn't want to spend days, weeks, months and years learning something. They want to get on with their lives. That's why they go to chiropractors. If we can make it yeah. simple enough, they go, oh yeah, I'd be willing to put a couple of hours into that, maybe an hour a week, um, over a few weeks. If that's enough, then great. But, but as far as reaching the mainstream goes, I think there are enough different success stories, whether it's body control Pilates or whether it's Bikram yoga or whether it's any of these sorts of large group classes that have taken off, Zumba, for example. I'm not suggesting turning Alexander Technique into any of those things, but there must be, there must be something from those delivery models that a bright Alexander teacher can um, glean from that and find a way to reach reach people more, more where they are. I'd like to know what that is. I think that's what's lacking. If we keep doing it one by one by one, we aren't going to change the world. <laughs>